I don't have a job yet and I have no idea where to start. Everybody's scared. You wonder, like, am I am I bothering this person? You know, am I being obvious? Remember the pain and agony of being 23. The feeling that you're you're fishing in a sea and everyone else has all the information and you don't even know the right question to ask. I knew I wanted to work in music, and you know that's a field that's all about connections. You know, my dad doesn't work in Hollywood. My mom's not, you know, a musician or anything. I'm really hesitant at first because I don't know what connection they have to me and whether they would be responsive and I kind of put it off. These kids may ask in the, in the wrong way and they may show up to your office uh, um, inappropriately dressed. They may not know how to use the subway. I had no idea how to network for say whatever that means. It was quite nerve-wracking. You will make a connection that will be meaningful to this young graduate for the rest of their career and probably for the rest of their life if you're, if you're able to grant them some face time. Patting myself on the back, I think I'm pretty generous with my time. Um, I try to be because people were generous to me, so it's a way of giving back. I was surprised at how many people got back to me and said, absolutely, I'd love to connect with you, I'd love to talk with you more. Well, I think a lot of times alums think that they have to have all the answers and they have to, or a job, I mean, either, or an internship, whatever, but, but just sitting and talking to a student is uh, just so valuable. Like, I don't think anything can be more valuable than that for a student. Dispel the image that you're a really busy, important alum. You know, um, none of us are too busy to help people. And so the, to the degree that you can just kind of be chilled out, I think, and, and reduce the defense mechanisms and the anxiety of people, that's probably mission critical. It definitely helps a lot when you know that the person on the other end is willing to help you. And when you hear their actual story, it becomes a lot more like a conversation. And I definitely became less awkward and robotic. I think for alums actually trying to, you know, reduce their psychological size, really talk to the students about, you know, where they were at a similar time in their life and the mistakes they might have made, the things that happened to them that uh, allowed them to progress along their career path. We were talking more about my interests as a senior and he would help me understand like what it was like for him making the transition out of Bowdoin and how that track is really a, a different process for everyone. The kindness that you show them by spending 10 or 15 minutes with them I think will go a huge way to cement them uh, not only to you and your organization, but to you and, and to Bowdoin. Significantly, um, I've often called upon people in the, in the Bowdoin network. That's been a real sort of go-to place for me because, uh, you know, that's one of the things that's unique about Bowdoin and people who I have nothing in common with except the fact that I went to Bowdoin and that's always been enough. Bowdoin alum especially are the friendliest people you'll ever meet. They treated me to lunch, they treated me like they knew me. We just met but it sort of felt like this connection, you know, we both went to Bowdoin and carried it a lot further. You know, they took care of me. If everyone can remember to be helpful and to say I'll have that conversation it may spark an idea to, to send the young Bowdoin grad on into the right direction.